Um, the first thing I want to do here is I want to confess that this video is pure indulgence on my part. Uh, so you might want to bail out now. I actually want to talk about mathematics. I want to show you how mathematics confirms what we already know about pullers. <clears throat> My approach is going to be, again, very, very simple. In fact, verging on the simplistic. So if you're a mathematician or an engineer, you might want to be allowed now because my tra my treatment is um, really very, very simple. So let's get started then and take a look at the mathematics of pullers. Here we have a screw thread, just as you would have on a puller. But if you can imagine me unraveling that screw thread, it just looks like a normal incline plane, just like a slope. It's really very straightforward. We'll expand that incline plane and look at it a bit closer. Um, can you imagine that that triangular shape there, that kind of half brick, is being pushed up a slope? That slope is the angle of the thread uh, on the screw. So F push is the force that we are applying and F load is the load that we're trying to overcome. F load is the restriction to us trying to turn the screw thread. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ignore FR. FR is the friction force. And I'm going to pretend, again, just for the sake of simplicity, that there is no friction. Of course, in real life, there'll be a lot of friction. But that can be reduced using lubrication. So we'll pretend that there is no friction at all. We can now write some equations. So here's where life gets a little bit um, tricky. As I've explained, F push is trying to push that weight or that load up that slope. F load is, you can think of it as the weight of that brick, but it's actually the force that's pushing down and restricting the puller from doing its work. Now, F load is opposed by Fn. It's an, up, uh, an upward reactive force against F load. So Fn can be divided into two components. It can be divided into a component that's parallel to the slope down the way and it's got another component, a vertical component, which is acting straight up against F load. So because of that, we can write that F push equals Fn sine theta. Don't worry yourself too much about the technicalities of sine theta for the minute. It's just a factor, um, a trigonometric, trigonometrical factor that we plug in there to help us with our analysis. So just as we've got a component of Fn acting down the slope, we've also got one acting straight up. And if we consider the straight up one, we can write that F load is equal to Fn cos theta. Again, don't get bogged down in the trigonometry. F load is equal to Fn cos theta. But if F load equals Fn cos theta, then we can just simply rearrange that formula to get Fn equals F load over cos theta. It's only simple O-level um, mathematics, really very simple. But you'll notice that if we take that Fn and bung it into the second equation above, we get F push equals F load times sine theta over cos theta. Now it's starting to look like real maths. What we can do then is we can rearrange that formula and we can say that F load equals F push 
all over, sine theta over cos theta. Now life is starting to get really quite exciting. So what happens here is that if theta is very small, i.e. if there's a very fine thread on the puller, then f push is divided by a very small number. In fact, the smaller the angle, the smaller that number is. It can get very small indeed, which means that f load can get very large. We are able to use a small force to produce a very big force. Let's take an example. If we assume that the angle of the thread is one degree, which is quite small, you'll agree, we've actually got f load equals one over the sine of one over the cos of one. And you can see there in that third line that the numbers are really very small indeed. The fourth line shows you there 1 over 0 0.017, blah, 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 blah. And it turns out then that F load is over 57 ton. We've increased the effectiveness of our F push, our measly little one ton, to over 57 ton. Really quite extraordinary. What this shows us, if we didn't, if we didn't know already, is that the finer the thread, the more effective the puller will be. And you'll see this in some commercial pullers, like the one shown here, where that fat thread there is quite coarse. That enables you to position the puller and get the, uh, the point there placed just where you want it uh, quite quickly. And once you've got that in place, you then apply that small thread up at the top with the bar through it. That's a, that's a small diameter, but very fine thread. And that's the one that actually does the work. It does the pulling. Again, I don't know if that was of any interest to you. I enjoyed putting it together. It, it's now 50 years, maybe more than 50 years, since I've studied any mathematics. But... I still find it really very interesting um, and very exciting where we can actually use mathematics to confirm what we already know in practice. It's even more exciting if we can use mathematics to predict um, what's going to happen in some engineering system. That's really very exciting.